Hey guys, it's Shane Davis, and uh, I'm here. I'm here because there was an awesome documentary. I was pointed out. Uh, this was pointed out to me. Interesting documentary. Dan Slott, Iron Man 2020. How the sausage is made. How is this succulent meat, this sausage made? But first, guys, I want to tell you, I have a special campaign up right now. We are crossed over $72,000. We have... Like 11 days left to go on Starlight Cats, Merlion Rising, only on Indiegogo. Create our own comics. Think about it. Create our own comics. Go check it out. Go back it, guys. Anyways, let's talk about this interesting documentary. I'd like to call it, we, we had this term in the industry, how the sausage is made. And a lot of people are puking their guts out right now. That's the thing. You never really want to know how the sausage is made. And when I watched this, you know what I saw? I didn't get to see just how the sausage is made. I got to see Dan Slot sausage fingers dance across a keyboard in multiple, multiple shots. It was freaking disgusting. I thought, I was like, well, what did they, how did they pack this meat at Marvel? I need to know the quality of this sausage. No, 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 no. You may see a guy waddle through New York City and, and in his free time, when he's when he's almost writing a comic book, I have to stress almost writing a comic book. Dan Slot's sausage fingers are dancing, dancing like the little pigs across a keyboard. It's it's uh kind of eh, it's kind of eh. So I want to talk all seriousness aside. Um, here we are. We got a uh, twelve weeks he has. Twelve weeks Dan Slot has to write a comic book. A comic book for children's. A comic book for your entertainment. And they say, he goes, this is the best thing ever. It's Iron Man 2020. First off, there are two writers on this book. It's not just Dan Slott. We'll get to that in a second. But I want to point out to everybody something you're going to notice when these two guys get hired to write this book. What do they do? They go to a comic shop. And then they, they sulk around the comic shop to try to find the comic. That they're referencing this character, Iron Man 2020, had a, a, a machine man appearance or something, uh, Tony Stark's evil brother, whatever. Nobody knows. Let's dig up this character. I, I'm gonna, I'm I'm the chosen writer to write this character that I don't know anything about. But what's funny is he says it's been building up to this. His whole run on Iron Man's been building up to this. For people that didn't read this book, you're like, how did I miss this great thing that Disney did a documentary on? Don't you worry. It did not do well. It, nobody liked it. It actually was made fun of repeatedly every day of its miserable comic book 22-page life. It sucked. It was a waste of money. They had a, a spinoff. They could not get enough spinoffs off this book. They had Riri Williams. They had Machine Man. They had some doctor with a cat. They had I, Wolverine. I, Wolverine. Get it? I, Robot, but Wolverine, because uh, we need Wolverine to help sell this turd of an uh, event. An event in Iron Man. Do we need uh, spinoffs in an event in Iron Man? Well, maybe. So we follow... Sausage finger Dan Slot as he rolls around. And, uh, you know, here we go. Uh, he's sitting down with Tom Brevoort um, after he explains how awesome it is to live in New York City. By the way, New York City is very expensive to live in. And we'll, we'll, we'll go into that in a minute. You'll see where I'm going with this. So he goes, uh, here we go. Good example screenshot from the show. Uh, so uh, he sits down with his editor, Tom Brevoort here, uh, Tom Brevoort of Marvel Comics, uh, one of their top editors. Um, a lot of people are outraged. They're like, why are these privileged white people writing these books? I want to write these books and look how carelessly they work on these books. People, uh, you know, um, apply. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I don't think the color of your skin uh, dictates how careless they are, but uh, yes, these are two careless people probably working on Marvel comic books that you wish you could. You wish you could. Uh, and they got it. Dan Slott's bragging. This is the best thing ever, and I got it. Nah, 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 nah. Look at my sausage finger. So he goes, uh, so I know you've got a lot of ideas and very little actually put together. Um, so this is a man that's uh, Dan's terrible with his deadlines. This uh, the fact that he knows this and he's worked with the man, worked with the man for like uh, thirteen years. He says, terrible with deadlines. 
Uh, you know, the definition of insanity is to uh, do the same thing over and over and expect a different outcome. Yeah. So I know you got a lot of ideas and very little actual put together, Dan, um, but you're bad with deadlines. So how do I uh, get around this problem? So right now, guys, he has 12 weeks to work on this book. 12 weeks. He comes up with some spinoffs. He shakes down his artists. They're trying to imitate this Marvel method that the great Stan Lee, the great Stan Lee used to, used to pull off with Steve Ditko, with Jack Kirby, these guys are trying to emulate something that they never understood. This chemistry where you write the Marvel method, which is like a paragraph, you give it to an artist, artist goes, let me break all this down into panels and pages. And then the writer comes along and writes a dialogue around it. Now, Sausage Finger McGee here is going to do something that I never thought anybody could do. He upped, he upped the game. He came in, he goes... Hey, uh, artist, figure this out for me. Uh, Pete Woods, artist, who happened? I could not tell if he's a gypsy, if he's homeless. He's living in the trailer in this episode. I don't understand. Is Do they not pay you enough? Uh, they, they even brag how you do pencils, inks, and colors. And, and Pete, you, you're figuring out his script. I don't know. I don't know. He lives in New York. You live in a trailer. It's cool that you're at the beach, but that's like telling a hobo to go go b pick trash at the beach. That doesn't make him any richer. Why are you? Why? Well, I mean, come on. Does he not have a home? I'm I'm curious. I, I the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, is he almost homeless? Does anybody care? But he does everything. Dan Slot says, even even figures out these pages for me because I I can't write. So this becomes a train accident of Sausage Finger McGee having. What I think is uh, the worst case of what writer's block or, or I, ha I hate to say, or is it a the biggest robbery in, in all of mankind? I don't know. I will, we're we'll going to find out together. So uh, here we go. Hey, and you need more time to get it done. He goes, I, I would like some of that, that, that more time. I can do more with more time. Please give me more time. And because it's not good enough and you need more time, yeah, that need that. Why not? You know, give him more time. Procrastination, it will make time makes everything better. Uh, Brevort here. Uh, we use the term work loosely when it comes to dance. So, uh, I, I, I have no idea where this thing's going. Uh, let's turn the page. Uh, so we go down the line. What we're going to end up is they end up. Six weeks are spent. Dan Slott has a total of five pages. This is one issue of a series with multiple spinoffs. Multiple spinoffs, I want to point out to you, those other creative teams cannot work on their designated books until he gets his book done. So literally, you're talking about not just the people on this team, meaning the artist, the letter, even the printer, editorial, all focusing around the procrastination and 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 looking at the sky. Dan Slot worried about his Twitter. Okay, with the, actually, yes, him being occupied with Twitter comes up in this documentary. It's 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 hilarious if you know Dan Slot thinks people. On Twitter are nothing but pixels. You're not real people. You're probably even blocked by Dan Slot. You should go check it out. See if you're on the blockchain. Uh, he likes to do that. So um, he's wasted six weeks. He has five pages written. And now with multiple spinoffs. So now each book, guys, understand each book, at least five people uh, needing paychecks, needing needing to put food in their baby's mouths. Dan Slot's uh, looking at Twitter. He has five pages in six weeks on a series on, of multiple issues of multiple spinoffs, and he can't even get issue one done, and six weeks are gone. Six weeks are gone. Uh, we got to get this train moving. You you have your artists, uh, you know, traveling the country in a, in a trailer. Uh, can we put, can we put, maybe he, he can put a damn payment on an apartment if you can write this script. You, you, know, you never know. You never know. So uh, we have to now bring in another writer, Christos Gage. Great writer. Why he didn't have the job to begin with, we'll never know. But uh, so now 
Dan's uh, convincing uh, artist to come up with visuals and 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 uh, pages and panels for him because he can't write a script. He's only going to write the dialogue, and now he can't write the dialogue. He needs Christos Gage. Come in here, Christos Gage. What does Christos Gage first do? Goes to the comic shop. I don't know anything about this character. Uh, let me go. And I wonder, did any one of these writers go into the comic shop and be like, can you sell this book? Because I don't know this book. I'm having to come to you to try to figure out what I'm about to give you to buy. Can you sell it? They, they didn't do that. So then, then, which by the way, this didn't sell too well. So then, through the next six weeks of production, 12 weeks, half of it's gone. Production. Uh, we end up burning through pages. Like, boom, we're hitting the gas. We're moving quick, people. We're moving quick. And here's the sad part of this whole documentary. The letterer. He has two days. He's sitting around looking at pages on his computer screen. No dialogue. Uh, Christos Gage, he's arguing back with Dan Slott on what the dialogue should be. Dan, if you were weighing in on the dialogue, why is Christos Gage here? Why are you now taking his dialogue and rewriting it? If you could write it to begin with, you should have wrote it to begin with. Back off. Let the book get done. Let people get paid. Let's put this book out. No, no, no. Now he writes over it. So now he's contributed to the book. So the con, what I was talking about, the big con here, guys. He conned an artist to write his book. He then conned another writer to write his dialogue. In the end, you know how this ends, guys? You know how this ends? Uh, so now we need to do it five more times. And he goes, and all of our lead time is done, is gone. They smile. Uh, but that's part of making uh, of the magic of comics. It is, they laugh. Artists living in trailers, drawing pages, letterers sitting at computers wishing they had dialogue to put in there. He had, he says, the letterer says they go straight to the printer from his desk. They're making changes. 15 minutes till. What if there's a power outage? What if your internet goes out? Does the book not print? This is dangerously close and highly unprofessional way to make product that is pre-ordered. People have sunk their money into this. Who are you playing with, people? You're playing with retail dollars. You're paying with people that are trying to run brick-and-mortar stores. You're playing with IP, and you're acting like juveniles. You're acting like unprofessional juveniles. And in the end, you know how this ends? It all ends with Dan Slott, with Dan Slott signing comics. I swear, I can't make it up. I can't make it up, kids. I can't. As the book's flying off the printer, in magic time and magic speed, it, they teleport to a comic shop. As the presses are running, the ink is drying. He's on his way to a comic shop for a signing. Not working on the next issue. That he's already blew through his lead time on issue one. He's holding up other people on their spinoff issues. He's he's too busy signing your books, kids. The book he didn't write. The book he didn't write the dialogue to. Not the artist that planned out the pages from this documentary. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. But he will sign it for you. This man will sign your book. And, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in the end, he had to throw it in. He killed Peter Parker and he outraged people. No, you didn't. You did it. Dr. Octopus's mind was in his body. Whatever. You did not kill Peter Parker. You wish you were allowed to kill Peter Parker. Last time I checked, Mr. Dan Slott, Peter Parker is still part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's still part of the comic books. He's still in the video games. You didn't kill him. You think you killed him, but you didn't. The only thing you did is kill time and add sausages. Sausages were made. People were vomiting. Uh, it's a thing. It happens. Please, guys, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. We're trying to do more with the channel. We're trying to push this. Uh, you know, this is a thing. Go check out Starlight Cats, Merlion Rising, right now on Indiegogo. 
Right now it's up, right there, uh, ready for you. I promise I won't procrastinate. I will not leave a letter behind sitting at a computer on a holiday. You see the Christmas lights behind him, waiting, waiting for the dialogue to come in. Growing up can be rough. It isn't always easy to make friends. Sometimes I feel alone. But then I met Barnaby and learned the truth about all cats on Earth, that they need my help. But the bullies are trying to stop our fun. Together with the Starlight Cats, I can collect all the jewels. So the Great Mer Lion will rise again. Evil alien rats called the Varrican live to devour all life forms. In this action adventure 48 page graphic novel, Rebecca is swept up with the Starlight Cats into an intergalactic conflict. Together, they have to find the power to stop the Varricans who are determined to conquer Earth. Only Rebecca and this elite team of cosmic powered felines can summon the magic needed to end this universal infestation. This is Starlight Cats Book One Merlion Rising. Back this project today only on the Indiegogo.